all my dreams come alive This life is for living with you I made my decision You lift me up, fill my eyes with wonder Forever young in your love This freedom's untainted with you The moment is wasted Good morning, Cross Point Church. It's so good to see all your faces here this morning. I'll let you grab a seat and greet those around you before you see. Yeah, there we go. Thanks. Well, once again, welcome. It's so great to see you all. If you're new here, we just want to welcome you. And we want to connect with you. So if you could, there's a connect card in front of your seat that you could fill out and drop off in the back, as well as a, a virtual connect card. If you're coming into us online or through Facebook, you can follow the link on Facebook to connect with us. And if you're live here, we would love to connect with you afterwards through those doors, and we even have a gift for you. This next announcement, I didn't do a good job of the first service. So I'm just going to read it exactly as it is on the sheet so you don't miss anything. Dr. Robert Crosby, a ministry leader, communicator, and published author, will be here at our church October 16th and then preaching the next day on the 17th. Saturday night from 6 to 8, they will be putting on a teeming life marriage seminar. So this is an opportunity not only for married individuals but also single individuals. It says it right here on the sheet. So it's for everybody. There will be dessert and drinks provided as well as child care. This is a scary one. Christmas is approaching us. And we are asking for you to volunteer for the program. If you're, if you're familiar with it, the last couple years we've done this awesome Christmas production. And we are asking for your help. So if you'd want to be involved in any way possible, talk to that guy right there, Fisher. You can find him here in person. 
at the office, call into the office, ask for Fisher, or email him at fisher at crosspointwaverly.com. Next three involve the youth here, so listen up youth in the front row as well as some parents. Uh, the fall conference is approaching us. It's for 6th and 12th graders. Yeah, it's going to be exciting. November 12th and 13th, small weekend getaway for them at the Horizon Events Center in Clive, Iowa. There will be an informational meeting on October 10th for parents and for students in the youth room. Uh, that's a Sunday. And if you have any other questions, you can, of course, always contact Pastor Madison. You probably saw it on the way in, but just as a reminder, as you leave here through that door, the pop-up swag shop. That is our youth's shop for swag gear. It's got awesome gear. I saw Clint buying a sweatshirt this morning. Uh, so it's for everyone, and, and it's, it goes towards uh, Speed the Light, which funds missionaries throughout the world. And then lastly, we will be doing a leaf-raking fundraiser through the youth group on Saturday, October 16th. So we're asking you, if you have leaves that potentially need to be raked at some point, to call Madison at the office or email her. It's just madison at Cross Point Waverly, and we'd love to get you on the list for our youth to come and rake your leaves. With that, let's turn our attention to the screen here. We have a message from our board members. Thanks. Good morning, Cross Point Church. My name is Nick Keith. And my name is Chris Getzinger. And on behalf of the board, we want to remind you that October is Pastor Appreciation Month. We have some fantastic pastors on staff at our church. Each Sunday, you're going to have the opportunity to give them a small gift, maybe a card, a gift card, maybe offer to babysit for them, whatever you can think of to show your appreciation for our pastors. There's going to be a table set up outside of the auditorium in the foyer area where you'll see pictures of our pastors and their families. And there'll also be a card box where you can drop those cards, those gift cards, or anything that you want to bless them with. And don't forget, you can also drop things off in the church office between 8.30 and 5, Monday through Thursday. So thank you again for your time. We encourage you to bless our pastors during the month of October and give them something to up, or encourage them, uplift them, and uh, make them feel loved and welcome here at Cross Point Church. Wow, thank you guys. Hey, it's a time of the service where we receive offerings. <laughs> thank you, thank you. The excited response of people saying we get to give. You know, part of our worship is giving. And I want to just thank you. You've been so faithful in your tithing and so generous in giving to Kingdom Builders. Uh, it, that's a great thing. And I thank you as part of the pastoral staff for for how faithful and generous that you've been. There are multiple ways that we can give today. One is we give online at crosspointwaverly.com. Another is text the amount to the number on the screen, or you can drop by the office anytime during the week, Monday through Thursday, okay, uh, about 8.30 through five o'clock any of those days and drop off a check or your cash, or you can drop those off in one of the lock boxes in the back of the room. For those of you that are guests today and you've never heard of Kingdom Builders, you might say, what is that? Well, that is our uh, initiative for giving globally, for, for supporting missions globally, for supporting uh, church plants and, and local kind of uh, ministries, and also for developing young Christian leaders. And as we are generous together in giving to Kingdom Builders, we get to be part of all of these great ministries in Iowa, across America, and around the world. And that's an awesome thing. Well, we're going to pray for our offering this morning, but first we're, we're, we're going to see what country we get to pray for because every week we get to pray for a different country. And today it's Indonesia. And look at all of the unreached people groups, 235 unreached people groups. I can say one thing that I know for sure. Children in Indonesia are being reached for Jesus. I was on a Zoom call uh, two Wednesdays ago with the missionary in Indonesia. And God's doing a great work among the children of that area, uh, of that nation and that, that area. So, so please be in prayer for the children of this part of the world and be in prayer that God would help us to reach these unreached peoples. Let's pray for our giving and for Indonesia right now. Jesus, you are so incredible. You love us so much. Thank you for allowing us to be here today. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that we can, uh, we can love you through our giving. 
Help us to be generous in all that we do, but especially in our giving. And Lord, help us to be generous in our prayer as we pray for Indonesia. Help us to remember every day this week to pray for these people. Pray for the children of that part of the world. And pray, Lord, that these unreached people would come to know you and their lives would be turned towards you forever. We thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, we're going to have a water baptism. Uh, yeah. And one of the things we do at our church is when people get baptized, when they come up out of the water, we cheer like your team just won the Super Bowl. Let's, let's give that a practice right now. Ready? We say, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we bring them out of the water and... All right, I'll turn it over to Pastor Dan. Praise God. Um, water b baptism, we believe, is such a big step. And it's one of your first steps in just starting your relationship with your Lord Jesus Christ by asking him to come in, put into your life and asking forgiveness of your sins. And then the next step of the part of the journey is to go public with that, to be able to share what God has done and to say, I'm going to commit to follow the, the rest of the days of my life with him, to make that public statement. And so I have two individuals, a married couple today, that are going to be doing that today, and I'm so excited for it, how they just continue to put their trust in God and put their faith in him. And if you're interested in wanting to get water baptized, all you have to do is contact the church office and we'll find a Sunday and we'll get you water baptized. And so we'll pretty much do it any Sunday. So we want to work for you, work that works for you and make it happen. So I'm my friend Elijah here. Elijah, have you asked Jesus Christ to be your personal Lord and Savior and forgiveness of your sins? Yes, I have. Praise God. Do you commit to following Jesus Christ for the rest of the days of your life? Yes, I do. Elijah, why do you want to get water baptized today? Because I love the Lord Jesus Christ with all my heart, and I want to give back to him as much as I can. So, Praise God. All right. Elijah, if you can yep. Elijah, upon your proclamation of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Awesome. This is April. April, have you asked Jesus Christ to be your personal Lord and Savior and ask him forgiveness of your sins? Yes, I have. Awesome. April, do you commit to follow Jesus Christ for the rest of the days of your life? Yes, I do. April, upon your proclamation of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Praise God. Please stand and join us as we continue to worship.
place and praise you we just give it all to you God take this time to just thank him and praise him for all that he's done in Jesus name I pray amen
God is good. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> we do sing of your goodness, Lord, because you are good. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Hey, on Wednesday night this week, right at the end of everything, we had a lot of kids. It was a busy night. Macy Mumathai comes running up to me and quotes her Bible verse of the week. It was awesome. <laughs> that was the best thing ever. That was the best thing ever. I don't know if you noticed, but Heidi Getzinger posted about a month ago, uh, Archie quoting a Bible verse. It was uh, 1 Corinthians 19, 13, which is not a short verse, a long verse. And he quoted that whole thing word for word. Like she posted it on Facebook, and I thought to myself, best use of Facebook ever. Man, let's use it for the good things like that. Right after first service, right after first service, um, Ida came and she, uh, she quoted Genesis 1-1 to me. I don't know if you know Ida, but Ida Varnum's about this tall. And she came up and quoted Genesis 1-1 to me. You know what these kids have in common? Their parents are encouraging them to learn God's word. And when kids learn God's word, they learn to trust God because learning his word grows into trust in him, in his person. And how does that work? Well, it works this way. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. We learn that in Sunday school as kids. We learn that in VBS as children. Uh, trust in the Lord with all your heart. How can you learn to trust in anybody with all your heart? Think about it. The only way we can trust in another with all of our heart is getting to know that other. The only way we can trust in God with all our hearts is to get to know him. And how can we get to know the heart of God? By spending time in his word. How can a young man keep his way pure? By living according to your word. The word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. How does it become that? It becomes that as we spend time in that word. We will grow in trust. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And faith is the first step to trust. See? And we can trust God by getting into his word and learning all about him and who he is and how much he loves us so very, very much. Romeo's going to talk more about that this morning. He's going to speak to us this morning. Open your hearts, open your Bibles, open your notes. Jesus, bless Romeo as he preaches today. Anoint him with the power of your Holy Spirit. Help him to have the words to say. Give him the power to say them. And open our hearts that we would accept it. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you. That's my niece. It's so good to be up here and uh, sharing the word of God. And my niece is singing there. I got to tell you this. Uh, I don't want to get off the topic of my message today, but I got to tell you this. It gives me joy to see my, watch my niece singing up here. To me, that is a prayer answer. You know, church, sometimes you pray about your children. You're not sure if God is hearing you or not. But I got to tell you something. God hears us, and he answers prayer, right? If you are a grandma here today, and you've been praying about that son of yours or grandson, I want to encourage you, keep praying. Keep praying until God answers that prayer. Amen? Amen? My prayer answer is watching her there, singing, using the gift of God to advance the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen? Hey, church, I'm excited to be here this morning. Are you? Yeah. That's right. I like it. I like it. I'm <laughs> I, have, I had to check it. Good morning, church. Good morning, church. Yes, amen, amen. I'm excited to be here this morning, like I said earlier. I'm excited to talk to you about uh, the Word of God this morning. I'm excited to share with you what God has impressed upon my heart, and I hope it transforms your heart. For the past two weeks, we've been on the series, I Will Do It, right? Two weeks ago, Pastor Jonathan talked about the importance of, the importance of small group, vulnerability, living in community, right? And the second week, he talked about uh, forgiveness. I can't tell you how important those two series have been to me personally. And I want to encourage you, if you have not listened to it, go back and catch on those. 
But if you, again, I want to also encourage you to do this. If you don't have a small group, church, if you don't have a group that you belong to, I highly encourage that you get, you find one, that you join one. And the reason why is because of this. I've been part of a group for the past, well, I've been part of a group as long as I can remember, but I've been part of a group with, uh, I've been part of a group with another group for the past two years. And I look forward, guys, every week to meet with these guys. They encourage me. They correct me when I'm wrong. And they walk through life with me. Just this morning, one of them texted me. said, Romeo, you got it. I'm praying for you. It was good to hear that. It was good for me to hear that, that somebody was thinking of me and praying for me. Anyway. This week, I want to talk to you about one important principle that I believe that if you were to apply this principle in your life, it will change, it will change your approach to life. It will change, it will empower your walk with God, and it will change the way you live your Christian life. It is a principle that you would find or you might find in people that have been walking with God for a long time. It is a principle that you will find in people that know God and trust God. This morning, I want to talk to you about the importance of trusting God. Amen? Trusting God. When I was thinking about this, when I was thinking about trusting God and what that means in my life, it was hard for me to narrow down to just a few bullets. Just ask my wife. It was a struggle. It was a real struggle. There are so many verses, you know, and stories and avenues that flood through my mind, but I knew I couldn't share all of them. My wife would say, you know, Romeo, you can't share the whole Bible in one sermon. <laughs> I'm so thankful that she was able to speak in my life at that time. But there are two things that I want to share with you this morning that I think, again, like I said, that if you do those things, you are more likely to tr- trust God more. Trusting, one of them is trusting God's word and trusting God's wisdom and his faithfulness. Trusting God's word, his wisdom, and his faithfulness. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word this morning. Thank you for this opportunity that you have given me this morning to come here and to share your word. I pray, Father, that every word that comes out of my mouth will be from you, Father. And I pray that the audience will be changed. I pray that your word will not return void for, to you, Father, because I only want to speak what is from you, and I believe what I'm about to say here today is from you. So, Lord, thank you for that. I pray and ask this in Jesus' name. One of my biggest hopes for this morning is that we would know the riches of spending time with God. There are so much riches when you spend time with God. When you spend time in His Word, there are things that happen that no one can tell you, but only God can tell you about. If you have your Bible, I want you to turn to Proverbs 3, verse 5 through 6. Let's read it together. Trust in the Lord... With all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. I love it. This is a popular verse, as PG talked about, shared it this morning. It is a popular verse that almost all of us know it by heart. But the question that I have for us this morning is this, church. What does it mean to trust God? And how do you trust God? I think one of the biggest things, one of the biggest answers to this is simply this. Spending time with Him in His Word. 
Numerous times, the scripture records Jesus Christ spending time with the Father. Luke chapter 4, verse 42 says this, At daybreak, Jesus went out to a solitary place. Matthew 14, verse 13 says this, When Jesus heard what happened, what had happened, that John the Baptist was beheaded, he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. Mark chapter 1, verse 35 says this, Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Jesus spent time with God. And I think, of, I think this, church, if Jesus, the Son of God, would make time to be in the presence of God every day, I think it's important for us as believers to do the same thing. Would you agree with me? I think it's very important. Jesus was very busy. He walked an average maybe, you know, maybe six miles a day or more than that. He was everywhere. Even in this busyness, he made time to spend with the Father. And I think when, and, and I think if Jesus did it, we should do it as well. But the question is, what did he do? What was he doing? He would spend time with the Father to do what? To pray? To talk to his Father? To spend quiet time with God? To receive instructions? His marching order on what to do that day. You may say, but Romeo, how do you know that's exactly what he was doing? If you go back to Luke chapter 4, verse 43 through 44, here's what it says. The people were looking for him, and when they came to where he was, they tried to keep him from leaving them. But he said, I must preach the good news of the kingdom of God to the other town also, because that is why I was sent. Spending time with God will do a lot of things to you. It will keep your focus right. If you are off course, it will redirect you to the right course, right? Let me share with you some of the benefits of, of spending time with God. And these are not my word, but I agree with this author. He says, when you spend time with God, you will be exposed to God's wisdom. I'm going to talk about that a little bit more here. Two, you will be renewed physically and spiritually. Isaiah 40, 31 says, Those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. You know, after a long day at work, after a chaotic day, after a day when you have received the news that you wish you wouldn't have never heard of it, when you sit in the presence of God, He will renew you. Amen? Amen? You will receive private corrections. Proverbs 28 verse 13 says this, He who covers, covers his sin will not prosper, but whoever confess and forsake them will have mercy. I got to tell you something, church. There is something that happens for me when I get along with God. Let's say the night before, my wife and I had an argument. By the way, we're human. We fight sometimes. We disagree on something, on some stuff. But when I get along in the morning, when I get along with God in the morning, God has a way of reminding me and redirecting me. A lot of the time, I fight because I'm selfish. I'm not getting in my way. Things are not going my way. And the Lord has a way of reminding me, my son, is that the most important thing? Is that important? Yes, you want it that way, but that is not what I want you to do, right? God has a way of correcting us. And the last thing is, is this, you will experience restoration of joy. Psalm 16 verse 11 says, you, may, you make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. 
when you spend time with God, whatever is going through, whatever is going through your mind, He has a way of reminding you, of giving you joy. Joy. Let me share with you a practical way of how this works in my own life. And please, I'm not sharing this to say that I have arrived or that I know all things or that I am just this supernatural or super spiritual guy now. But I want to share with you something that I've learned years ago and it stuck with me. And I've been practicing this in my life. See, when I get up in the morning, the first thing I do, I roll out of my bed and land on my knee. What do I do that for? I will thank God. God, thank you for today. Thank you for another day. Thank you for my health. Thank you for my family. Thank you for my wife. Thank you for my home. Thank you for the day. I'm not sure what's ahead of me, but I'm trusting you, Lord. I'm trusting you that you already know. I would get up from there, I would go into my office, I have my favorite chair, and I'll sit down. And some days, the Lord would impress a verse upon my heart to either encourage me <laughs> and to edify me or to empower me. Some day, it is just sit. Sit. And it will look like something like this. I would say, Lord, it's been a stressful day or a stressful week, like this week. <laughs> Preparing for this message was stressful for me because I had the demand of work and the demand of doing this right. Because to whom much is given, much is asked, right? Much is asked. It's a higher calling to preach the Word of God. So all of that was, it was just so much. And during those times, you know, when I sit there and talk to God about my situation, and like I said, sometimes he will impress a verse upon my heart. And one of them this morning is simply Proverb, Proverb 3, verse 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord and lean not on your own understanding. Right, PG? Lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. You see, church, the storm that I may be going through may not change, may not. But my storm, God will calm my own storm. He will remind me, my son, it's okay. I know you don't understand all the detail. I, don't, I know you don't know what is ahead of you, but trust me. Trust me. Amen? Trust me. The second thing is this, trusting, trust God's wisdom. Trust God's wisdom. Trust God's wisdom in decision-making. We should strive to be in a relationship with God where we use His teaching and His Word to make our everyday decisions. Trusting God's wisdom will cause us to ask ourselves these questions. One, Lord, will this decision reflect you? Lord, will this decision that I'm about to make honor you? And of course, Lord, in light of your word, is this a wise decision? Is this a wise decision? Because, Lord, I want nothing to do. I want nothing to do with that if it's not from you. Because here's the reason why. You may make a decision thinking, well, it's fine. Everybody's doing it, and therefore I should do it too. Wrong. It may not have an effect on you today, but it may have an effect on your generation to come. You may think that, oh, that decision is fine. I should just keep on going. It won't affect me. It will not affect me today. Yes, it may. It may lead to divorce. Turn your Bible to James chapter 1, verse 5. I want to show you something. James chapter 1, verse 5 says this. If any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to him. First thing is this, church. 
this is a promise. It is a promise that when we ask for God's wisdom, he will give it to us. doesn't matter what it is. He will give us the wisdom. So the question that I have for you and I today is this, where do you need wisdom? Where do you need wisdom? Is it how to raise your children in a godly way? Is it how to manage your finance? Or is it how to do, is it how to do your job with excellency? Amen. Amen to that. Thank you. Because we need that in the workplace. Where do you need wisdom? Maybe, let's say you are asking God for wisdom on how to raise your children in a godly way. Here's what the Bible says about it. Proverbs 22, verse 6 says this. Train a child in a way he should go. And, when, and, and, and even when he is older, he will not turn from it. And here's how you do it. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 7 says this. Impress them. Impress the word of God on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down, and when you get up. You see, once in a while, my son would just, you know, ask me the toughest question. I remember this. I can't remember when, how old he was. He said, Dad, what happened when people die? It took me by surprise. <laughs> I don't know how, but the Lord impressed the wisdom in my heart right away. The Bible says this, that when someone died and that they have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, they immediately, their soul, their body goes to the ground, but their soul immediately goes to heaven. Hmm. Wow, just the soul, not the body? I say, well, yeah. Yes. For what? And here's the reason why. To wait for the second resurrection, and on that second resurrection, they will be given a new body in which they will spend eternity. Amen. Amen. Ask God for wisdom. Maybe you are here this morning and raising children is not the kind of wisdom you need. What is it then? Is it finance? Is it your job? Let me share two verses with you regarding to that. The first one is this. If it is, if it is finance, uh, Proverbs 22 verse 7 says this. A borrower is a slave to the lender. Now, I'm not here to talk to you about finance, but I'm here to say this. Examine those for yourself. What does the Bible have to say about finance? And the reason why I say that, I remember earlier I said that making foolish decisions will lead to destructions. We have so many divorces today, and a lot of them stems down to finance. One is spending more than the other one, not making the right decision. We got to catch up with the Jones, right? Is it wise? Lord, if I make this decision, what would happen? Is it, is it about your job? Is it about your job? Colossians chapter, Colossian chapter 3, verse 23 says this. It's not on the screen. It says this. Whatever you do, work at it as if you were working for the Lord and not for man. You know what happened there, church? You know, sometimes you see this, I mean, in workplace where when the boss is there, everybody's doing, everybody's 100% in or at least 100% in. And when the boss turns his back, 50% in or less than 50% in. You see, but when you have the perspective of God in mind, work at it as if you were working for God, here's what would happen. Whether the boss washes you or not, you're doing your job. You are doing everything that you can to do it with excellency because your standards are not men's standards, it's God's standards. You realize that God is watching you, and because God is watching you and you will give an account, you are challenged to do it right. Amen? Seek wisdom. Seek wisdom. Here are some of the benefits of wisdom. I love this. It leads to abundant life. When you live by wisdom, it brings us joy, health, long life, promotions, 
peace, honor, and riches. Not money, but riches of living life God's way. But the opposite is also true, though. The Bible says that the ways of a fool leads to destruction, but the one that seeks wisdom will experience these things. That's why I want to be judged. This message is good for me. I want to live in, I want to live in the ways God wants me to live. I want to make decisions. I want to make wise decisions. I want to tune out what people say and focus on what God says. Because what God says is true. It will keep me from destructions. And finally is this. Trust God's faithfulness. Trust God's faithfulness. Trust that God is loyal. Trust that God is sovereign. He knows all things. He knows all things. And he is in control of all things. It doesn't matter what is happening in our country or happening in your home. Or it does matter. But the big thing, it doesn't matter. God is in control. And the reason why I say that it doesn't matter is because of this. God already knew. God knew that this event was going to happen. And he has already gone ahead of us to prepare the way. But we need to rest in his faithfulness. God, I don't know. I'm trusting you. Let me share with you something. Years ago, I was so worried about my kids. I'm like, Lord, the world is crazy. Everything out there is crazy. And I'm afraid that my kids will buy into such lies. I'm afraid that this may happen to me. I'm afraid that my kids may not grow older to know Jesus. Through his word, he encouraged me. I am faithful. I know all things. Rest on me. Let me share with you one of, uh, one of my favorite verse, of a favorite song lately. It's called, Promises by Maverick City. It sums up the faithfulness of God. And it goes like this. Faithful through the ages, God of Abraham, you are the God of covenant and faithful promises. Time and time again, you have proven you will do just what you said. Though the storm may come and the wind may blow, I will remain steadfast. And let my heart learn when you speak a word, it will come to pass. Great is your faithfulness to me. Church, the storm will come, but we need to remain steady. It will come. It's not a matter of when. It will come. My prayer is that we will remain steady in His faithfulness. That God is who He says He is. Right? He is who He says He is. Let me share with you two more verses. Psalm 119, verse 89 through 90 says this. Your word is eternal. It stands firm in the heaven. Your faithfulness continues through all ages. You established the earth and it, and it endured. Lamentation, chapter 3, verse 23. Great is your faithfulness. His mercies are renewed. His mercy are new each morning. God is faithful and his promises always come true. And when God makes us a promise through his word, 
let us hold into that. That he is faithful, and whatever the case, he will make it come true. Amen? Amen? Let us pray. Father, thank you so much for your word this morning. Thank you, God, Father, for this word was just for me, just like it is for the right person in this room today. I pray by the sound of my voice and by the power of the Holy Spirit that the message, this, that this message that you have prepared for that specific person, that they will make a commitment this morning to say, I will trust God. I will spend time in His Word. I will trust His faithfulness and wisdom. I want to experience God. I want to live a victory, a victorious life. I want to walk confidently with the Lord. Lord, thank you for that person. I pray that it may be changed forever. In Jesus' name, and the people of God says, and amen. Praise God. Let's give Romeo a hand. That was fabulous. We're so thankful uh, for his leadership and for what God is doing. But you know what? I'm going to keep talking. I'll talk nice and loud. I can be, well, now, there we go. Now I'm nice and loud. But that was a powerful word. And you know what? Each week, we stop to make sure that, you know what? If you haven't asked Jesus Christ to be a personal Lord and Savior and ask him forgiveness of your sins, here in just a moment, you're going to have that opportunity. Or you might just be sitting out there and you know, I need to rededicate my life. I've been coming every Sunday. But I haven't really been all in. I really haven't given God my life. Today's that day where you can rededicate your life to him or ask him to be your personal Lord and Savior for the very first time. So if everybody could bow your heads and close your eyes. The first step of trusting God is asking him to be your personal Lord and Savior, the forgiveness of your sins. Again, it could be even just rededicating your life to him. Maybe you've gone astray and you've made some choices and not been putting your trust in God. Maybe today's the day where you need to rededicate your life. When I count to three here in just a moment, if that's you and you need to ask Jesus Christ to be your personal Lord and Savior for the very first time or rededicate your life, just raise your hand just saying, that's me. On the count of three. One, two, three. Everybody could please stand. We're going to say a prayer. And if you want to make that commitment today, all you have to do is just repeat this, these words after me. But just mean it with everything within your heart. Putting your trust in him and asking him forgiveness of your sins. But know that you won't be praying this prayer alone, but that we'll be praying alongside you in encouragement. So if everybody could bow your heads and close your eyes, we'll say this prayer together. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for sending your son Jesus to die on the cross for me. I admit that I'm a sinner. I admit that I messed up. This morning I ask for your forgiveness. Come give me a fresh start. Be my king. Be my savior. Take over every area. Take over every aspect. Help me from this day forward to live for you with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, with all my strength. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Well, let's give God praise for what he's doing. If you made that commitment today, if you could text the number on the screen, yes, the word yes, to 319-250-8998. Again, it's text the word yes to 319-250-8998. We would love to follow up with you and just encourage you along the way.
Now, every time at the end of the service, we, we leave a song for prayer. And so the prayer team is going to be coming forward. But this message talked a lot about faith and putting our trust in God. Putting our trust in God with wisdom, faithfulness, and his word. And so you know what? There might be some things that you are going on, that are going on in your life right now, that you need to trust God with. Sometimes the best thing to do is pray about it. Next thing is sometimes to take action and step out in faith and be prayed with. And so there's going to be people up here that would love to pray with you. Don't walk this life alone, and we'll pray with you. So if you need prayer, just come on down and come, and we'll pray with you.
with believers and worship a God who is good, who is able. We just praise you for that and we thank you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. This is the end of our service, but you are welcome to stay and continue to worship. We hope to see you next week at 8.30 or 10.15.